Hi everyone, it's Christine from Bees Knees Art here. Have you thought about what you're going to do on Anzac Day this year? We can't go to the services as we usually do because of the social isolation that we have to all do at this point in time. So why not make our own mini cenotaphs at home that we can then assemble to at 6am in the morning and we can still show our respect for those that have fallen in past conflicts but also to show our respect for our health workers that are still on the front lines even today and all of our essential essential workers that are still up and running and having to go to work and facing the fact that they may also come in contact with this virus. So today I have for you in a couple of different activities. The first being where we make a Guard of Honour Lantern. So this is the Guard of Honour Lantern that I made and I would like to show you today how we go about doing that. It has in it a small battery operated tea light and then it also has some sand in the bottom just to keep it weighted down. The rest of it is actually fairly basic and it's all stuff that you can get from home. So before we start, there are some things that we need to have on hand ready to go. The first thing and probably the most important thing is you need to have a two litre plastic a milk bottle. And this one has had the top cut off. It's your first most important thing. The next thing that you will need is before you start, it would be a good idea to go onto your computer and see if you can find an Anzac uh, silhouette. Now, I googled this um, and just put in Anzac soldier silhouette and this is what came up. Now, when I print, went to print him out, I, print, I actually made him a little bit bigger by to about 150%. Um, and then that's the size that he came out, which means that when I place him on the bottle there, you can see that he's actually going to fit quite nicely. So you need to have one print of this, or if you don't have a printer at home, maybe you would be um, brave enough to have a go at uh, sketching in the outline of the soldier and then painting it or colouring it in black. Then we'll cut him out afterwards. So he's been needed for later on anyway. The other thing that you will need is some alfoil. Now the reason why you need the alfoil is that we are going to place some of the alfoil at the back part of the lantern and the ref that will then reflect the light that is happening um, when we put the, the small tea light in here. Now the tea lights, because we are actually in a fire restriction time at the moment, we can't have naked flames and it's not a good idea anyway, it's not very safe. So I would say suggest that if you can, see if you can get one of the little battery operated tea lights um, and that will fit in there perfectly. You will also need to have some paints. The paints that I'm using today are the poster paints like these, they're quite cheap to get. You can get them from the um, Red Dot stores. I think Spotlight has them. The craft stores obviously do have them as well. Uh, these are quite big bottles. You can get smaller bottles. Uh, and it's just that it's just a tempera paint. So that's all you need. They are a little bit transparent, which is actually what we want. We don't want them to be really thick like acrylic paints because the acrylic paints will actually block that light from, it will stop it from coming through on the front part of this um, here. So we want to have something that's fairly transparent. And the poster paints should still grab to that plastic. So the colours I'm using today are yellow, red, orange, and I've also got some blue which I may put up towards the top of the um, the lantern but I may not use it yet and just we'll just play with that and see how we go. I'm using my plastic plate that I used the other day as my palette again um, and I'm also going to use a wide paintbrush. So this is the paintbrush I'm going to use, just any paintbrush will do um, just so you can actually get in and reach. You'll also need a jar of water to clean and you will need to have your paper towels to clean off and dry your brushes. 
So that's uh, all we need to get started. So let's do that. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention was that we need to have, when we're using our tinfoil, we also need something to attach it to the back here of the lantern. So what I have here is on top of my palette with my paint, I also have some tacky glue. You can also use things like PVA glue or I think even glue stick might even work for what we want. So all I'm going to do is get some of this glue and I'm going to smear it on towards the top of the back sides of the lantern. And this is just to hold it towards the top and it should just then stand there. So we're just going to pop it across the top. We don't need to be able to have to get all the way in there and completely cover it. Now, as you can see, I just used a pop stick to spread that out. We don't, I don't like using brushes when I'm actually using uh, glue because it tends to ruin the brushes. So all I did first up was I pulled off a sheet of alfoil and I just sort of wrapped it around to sort of see how much alfoil I'd need approximately and then I folded in the excess just like so. And what I want is to have, there's two different sides to the alfoil. There's one side that's sort of a little bit more, I don't know, more of a matte finish and one side that's very, very shiny. It's the shiny side that we want facing into the lantern because that's going to reflect more light. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to fold it in half like so and then I'm going to place it inside my lantern and then I'm going to open it up and press the top part up against the sides where I place that glue. So I'm just using the back of my hand and then using my other hand out here to press down like so. And that's going to hold that there. And when I look on the inside, I can then just straighten up the rest of it. Hopefully you can see in there. And then it doesn't have to be perfect in there because we're going to be doing something else to that later on. Then you can either tear it off or you could cut it with scissors. Um, it doesn't really matter which. It's actually good for your scissors to cut them on foil because it actually helps to sharpen them. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to quickly cut around the top. And I have left a little bit of an edge, as you can see. And the reason for that is so then I can then fold down the foil over the top edges, like so. And it just has to sit there. We don't have to glue it or anything like that. Now, if it starts to come around the front, we don't really want it there. So you could actually either tear that little piece off or you could tuck it on the inside. It doesn't really matter. So there is the reflective part of our lantern already done. Very, very easy. So the reason why I put that in first is because I'm going to be painting this and I didn't want to have to wait too long to be able to put that in and wait for the paint to dry. So I've decided to have a go at um, putting the foil in first. It doesn't matter if I get a little bit of paint on that. I'm just going to lift this up a little bit. It doesn't matter if I get a little bit of paint on the foil as long as I'm not completely covering it. So now we're going to start with our white, uh, sorry, our yellow, because that is our lightest colour. And I'm just going to pop 
okay on the bottom on the two sides you can see that I'm painting and it doesn't have to be perfect then I'm going to come up in lines now I've got a little bit of yellow a little bit higher up than I planned but that's okay because when I next use it I'm going to only be using orange and they're analogous colors so it doesn't matter too much I'm going to bring that yellow up a little bit higher but I had it because what we're going to do next is we're actually going to blend in the colors so actually I'm going to go up to where I accidentally hit the side wall anyway so you can see the color is showing through that quite nicely and just finish that off like so I'm going to put some more in there if I want now I'm going to come back and I don't need to wash my brush because we're going to be blending the colors anyway so now I'm going back getting a little bit of orange and then I'm going to come in I'm actually going to go over top of the top part of where the yellow was because we want that blending to happen and then we just add more of the orange there and just to show you what I'm doing from the outside it doesn't have to be perfect all we're trying to do is to get a color happening there and if you feel that it's not strong enough you could always come back and do some more so I'm going to go up slightly higher So, and it doesn't have to be in a perfect line either. Painting. Like so. I like how that yellow is coming through. So I'm going to come back and put a little bit more yellow in there. Just down the bottom. Got the yellow in my palette so I might as well use it that's giving that blended color then I'm coming to my red I'm going to finish it off but I'm going to go you can see that I've gone down into the orange so we're getting a blending of the two colors come back with some more like so and then finish it off at the top with my strong red now if you wanted to you could have probably maybe used long stripes starting from down the bottom and then having the stripes come all the way through but this is really just to give the suggestion of the morning sunrise and that is that part done just like that okay that can go in the water now we have this little guy that we need to cut out so I'm going to come along around him now if you're not confident about cutting him you could just leave him like that but his silhouette's not going to stand out very much you'll get more of a rectangle so it is a good idea to try and cut around the shape of the actual silhouette so I'm going to do this very slowly and very carefully um, and I will speed up the 
the video as I do this. And there we go. There is our silhouette. So now what we're going to do with him is on the outside of the lantern, we're just going to glue him down just like so. I'm going to try using just um, my stick glue to start with. It's getting a little bit old. Um, and see whether he will stick down with that. Otherwise, I would probably use PVA glue um, or the tacky glue that I had. My tacky glue is a little bit old as well, so it's getting a bit hard to use. So I can then stick him down either there, just to one side. In fact, I'm going to stick him on this side. And I can, where I've missed a little bit with his white, the white pieces, I could actually go over if I wanted to, um, just to make sure that that's all dark. The other thing is I actually printed out two of these, so I could put one on the side and then one on this side and have them, I could, um, this one here is facing the same way, but what I could do is cut them out then colour the other side of him, place him this side way, and then he would actually be standing um, just like the soldiers do at the cenotaph, where they stand with their backs on each corner. So that is one thing that I could do with that lantern. Now I'm just going to go and get one of my little tea lights and place it in there and see if I can show you what it would look like when it is um, a little bit darker and how it would look once it's actually shining. So here is the finished product of our Guard of Honor Lantern. And I'm just going to turn off the light now so you can see what it looks like in the full darkness. How effective is that? If you like what you've seen here today and you like this activity, please subscribe because I'll be doing more types of activities like this in the next few weeks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.